Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are in the journey through A Course in Miracles by Ken Wapnick, and we are in chapter one, The Meaning of Miracles. We are picking up our reading on page 28. You are free to believe what you choose and what you do attests to what you believe. This is section two, paragraph one, sentence nine, or miracle principle number nine. We are free within the illusion, but there can be no free will in heaven because there is nothing to choose between. Free will, therefore, has meaning only within the world of dreams. On the other hand, the phrase freedom of will, which occurs near the end of the text, means something quite different, for it refers to the fact that the wills of God and His Son are free with no interferences to restrict the free flow of their love. This reflects the atonement principle. The separation never happened. Within the dream, however, we do have freedom to choose, to believe the ego or the Holy Spirit, and our choice is reflected in what we do in the world. This is another important theme although stated here somewhat primitively. We will later find it expressed in a more sophisticated manner. To restate this, we can always tell which teacher we have chosen by how we feel. If we do not feel peaceful but are angry, fearful, or disquieted in any form, we know we have decided for the ego. What we do as bodies comes from what we think. Again, this refers to the teacher we choose. Nothing in A Course in Miracles is more important to understand than this. You are free to establish your kingdom where you see fit, but the right choice is inevitable if you remember this. We will return to the last part of this passage, but for now I am interested only in the statement you are free to establish your kingdom where you see fit. Within the illusion, our decision-making minds have the freedom to choose whether we will believe in the kingdom of the ego, which consists of separation, sin, guilt, fear, and death, or the kingdom of the Holy Spirit, the atonement that reflects heaven's kingdom in which there are no separate interests because there is no separation. Section 4, paragraph 2, and this is sentence 6 to 8. The miracle joins in the atonement by placing the mind in the service of the Holy Spirit. This establishes the proper function of the mind and corrects its errors, which are merely lacks of love. Your mind can be possessed by illusions, but spirit is eternally free. The proper function of the mind is to choose for the Holy Spirit and against the ego. Note the emphasis on mind, which here is implicitly contrasted with the body, the ego's afterthought that is its defense against, its defense against our returning to the mind and choosing the freedom of truth's atonement instead of the imprisonment of the ego's illusions. Section 5, paragraph 1, sentence 3. While you believe you are in a body, however, you can choose between the loveless and the miraculous channels of expression. The miraculous channel of expression is simply being in the right mind which means we have automatically corrected the mistaken choice for the ego's lovelessness. Section 5, paragraph 1, sentences 4 through 7. You can make an empty shell, but you cannot express nothing at all. You can wait, delay, paralyze yourself, or reduce your creativity almost to nothing, but you cannot abolish it. You can destroy your medium of communication but not your potential. The writing here is not nearly as clear as it will be later, but Jesus is referring to our mistake of having chosen the ego 
the loveless choice. Once made, a choice that is nothing, an empty shell is the result. Yet while we have the power to destroy the body, which is our medium of communication, we do not have the power to abolish the mind's power, our potential. Our right mind remains intact for the Holy Spirit's presence is always there. Section 5, Paragraph 5, Sentence 1 Whatever is true is eternal and cannot change or be changed. This idea is later expressed much more beautifully. Not one note in heaven's song was missed. Despite what the separation, and that's chapter 26, section 5, paragraph 5, sentence 4. Despite what the separation seems to have wrought, despite what the ego seems to have made, the cosmos and all worldly experience, it has had no effect on reality. This is the atonement principle. Nothing has changed. That the ego never wants us to choose. The atonement principle that the ego never wants us to choose. Section 5, paragraphs 5, sentences 2 to 3. Spirit is therefore unalterable because it is already perfect, but the mind can elect what it chooses to serve. The only limit put on its choice is that it cannot serve two masters. We either choose the ego or the Holy Spirit, but we cannot choose both at the same time. Note how Jesus emphasizes these themes at the beginning of a symphony, his focus being consistently on the mind's power to choose which thought will be made real. If it is the ego's thought, a world of separation, specialness, attack, suffering, and death inevitably emerges. If, however, we choose the Holy Spirit's thought of atonement, Nothing in the world can disturb our peace. Our bodies might be affected, but nothing here will change our minds. No matter what goes on in our personal world of bodies, the miracle helps us realize that the mind's place of peace is unchanged. And I am going to, let me make sure that we're not going to turn the page and be over with this section. No. All right, so I'm going to stop there for now, and I will pick up the reading tomorrow where we left off. I appreciate you. I hope that you have a most beautiful day, and I look forward to seeing you then. I love you. Bye.